All right, guys, what an exciting first quarter it's been with you gentlemen. Yep, it's been very um, exciting. It's the end of Lots season. Lots of things done. Good times, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. End of season 12. I'm sorry. End season, of season 12. 12. <laughs> oh We're not there yet. Way ahead. Thinking. Sorry, I've been planning ahead. It's the end of week 12, quarter one, season one, whatever you guys want to call it. And we wanted to take a little bit of time to just kind of recap the year so far that we've gone through. Uh, maybe some of you viewers are just tuning in. We're going to pretend like this is your very first video. You watch this when you like it, but you're not exactly sure what all we've done, what all we've been going through. So to start this segment off, we have created a trailer that we want you to watch. It's going to detail some of our, some events, some ups, some downs, some things that have happened between uh, January to, to present day to kind of give you a recap of where we're at and what we're going on. And then I thought it'd just be a kind of a cool idea for us to all sit and talk about it. Mm -hmm. After the video, we also, I put a poll on YouTube yesterday asking you guys what unanswered questions went on out there that you uh, wanna hear about. You know, some things you saw where we started and maybe never finished it or got to an answer. So we're gonna go through all those questions right after this clip. All right, so exciting. Uh, first thing I wanna talk about is you guys, either your most favorite or your least favorite event that's happened since we started this series. We'll start with Marco. The least favorite uh, was definitely having the credit card fraud situation. Yeah. Um, I mean, losses suck, but it is a part of business. But I mean, that's more, uh, I, I look at it more like you and I really did have the you know intuition that something was wrong, right. but we still kind of proceeded because it was like a really awkward situation because it was kind of like, all right, well, what if this is okay, but you and I just still had that like, oh, no, this guy seems kind of weird. You know, I think for now, moving forward from now on on those type of deals, like we're just going to cut the sale if we don't like something. Right. It's just no right. point to take the risk, if, especially like, you know, the first sign is like your gut feels bad, that's always the first sign of defense, right. you know? So yeah. what's your favorite? I don't know why this is my favorite, but <laughs> yeah, I guess it utilizes my skills, but I loved just catching those kids right in, right in the act, trying to sell us a fake watch, man. I was just oh, like, yeah. this, is, this is where like, this is where my time to shine is like, anytime somebody hands me a fake watch, I, I love that I could just instantly tell, especially with Roman, like that was a funny situation. That was, yeah. that was one of you my know? favorites where I bet him a dollar that I was like, he got me because it was like a dealer hands you right. the watch, you're there on his, in his studio and you think uh, there's, you know, you, you don't even, that's the last thing in your mind. I just thought he was wanting to see what my pricing was. Mm -hmm. But then yeah, I bet him a dollar. I was like, go try that <laughs> shit, Marco. I bet you a dollar he doesn't last three seconds. It, it, it was nothing. like one second. Yeah, it, it was, was like, like <laughs> yeah, cause like the first thing I always look for when somebody hands me a watch is like, what's going on with the watch? I don't care who hands it to me. I'm always gonna be like, mm, let me see this. What about you, Dylan? You've been here the second, third longest. My favorite part. Favorite part had to be when we went to that Cars and Cantina show and we set up the cars in the booth. It was yeah. really, really cool seeing how many people recognize Marco and Anthony walking around, uh, seeing everybody wearing their watches and cars go hand in hand together. That was such a cool experience. And we got to see Daniel Mack there. Yeah, yeah. So that was awesome. Least favorite? Um, I don't really have a least favorite. I guess the least favorite week would have probably been that snow week just because oh, it was a geez. tough week for everybody. We were snowed in, so I had to work from home a lot. Other than that, I mean, it was just a great, great season all around. Had a ton of awesome points. What about you, Mike? Least favorite was snow week, so we're closer to the office. So we came in and, you know, we worked here in the shop. And I think I froze my feet off and my hands off a couple times. And I'm still dealing yeah. with the after effects of being green from that. Um, but, <laughs> so oh, God. That was I definitely, did sit here yeah. in my Big coat. I remember, yeah. People it, love it was that literally, coat, by the way. I don't even know what brand it, it is. It was so literally cool. 45 yeah. degrees in this shop. We were already that was, concerned about that was, Darby. Yeah, that and was. Darby yeah, had it. Darby worst. had it. Wow. Yeah. 
both, both Darby and I, I would say, had it pretty bad. Oh, yeah, and your house got My flooded. house oh, got man, completely dude, flooded. Terrible. I was out of my house for two weeks. I thought that was going to be your worst experience, but that's less uh, that's dude, more personal. I don't know. I'm a little bit yeah. more like... It right. costs as much as credit card fraud. No. Right. I'd gladly write a check for his if we can have the money back from the, yeah, that's from just the credit card sale. That's just hotels and whatever. And my favorite experience was in that same week. So we came back that Monday after the storm, and we had a hell of a lot of packages coming in, and we had even more that needed to go out from back orders. Yeah. And we came together as a team in that one day, and we cleared all the inventory, we got all the packages out, and I said, all right, I knew I was a believer before, but now I really see what kind of potential this team has, uh, and that was my kind of that's what propelled me to move forward with this venture. Nice. My favorite, I'm going to say, is when you and I were touring the office up here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a stretch, but it was we were touring the office up here. We were actually looking at office space upstairs, and we were about to settle on one. And our leasing agent mentioned she's like. I don't think you guys will want it because it's small, <laughs> but it's ground floor retail. And I was like, well, take it. It was a year ago. You and I were hustling watches on my dining room table. A year before that, I was a, a typical backpack dealer. I was I, you know, dealing with a, a box full of Breitlings and Tags and Panerai. I remember I walked in here, and it was the day that all the <clears throat> tiles had gotten put on the wall. And that was when it kind of hit. I was like, holy shit. Was, was coming the through, vision's yeah. coming to life, yeah. so. Least favorite, honestly, I'll tell you, I, I hate being lied to. That whole Sebastian yeah. that gave me a bullshit story when I'm saying, look, dude, I know what the deal is. You're lying to me, don't do it. And he continued to lie to me. That's probably the, my, my least favorite instance. Another thing I wanted to talk about, guys, is we got, we've got we gone from three employees to nine employees now. And one thing I noticed was that I would get people, I would send Mike, I'd send clients your contact info, and they'd reach out to me like, who's this scammer? So I thought it would be a good idea to introduce our entire staff so everyone knows who they're dealing with. Obviously, you've got Marco and myself. You guys know Dylan, our lead sales manager. You guys know Mike. This is our operations manager. Also, behind the camera, which you can't see, we've got Darby, our head, head videographer and photographer. We've also just brought in Christian, who's going to be Darby's assistant. On the sales team, we have Alfred. He's going to be our... Sales guy number one. Yep, sales associate. Yep. Sales associate number one. We have Trent, who's going to manage a lot of our back end and social media. Mm -hmm. uh, we recently let Bailey go, as I mentioned, or actually Bailey went on to other ventures, uh, and we've replaced him with Vic, who's mm -hmm. going to be starting uh, next week, I believe, or yes. maybe coming in on Thursday. He'll be in the next video. He'll be in week one or week 13's video, season two. two. As the moment, because I know people are going to ask, we are fully staffed right now. Um, we get a lot of requests for people wanting to come in and work for us. Right now, we are we've got a good team. We've got some training. We got a lot of training to go through. We've got a lot of structural organization we've got to figure out. So for the time being, we're good on sell on staff on everything. Mm -hmm. If and when the time comes, we need more. You guys will be the first to know. Free for dinner. We have a few concerns you want to talk about. Uh, yeah. When? How about tomorrow? True Lux. Okay. What time? 6.30 or 7. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Good deal. All right. We will make a reservation and we will see you there. Cool? Sounds good. All right. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Pull out your phone. Right now we're yeah. averaging about, I think we're averaging about 200 subscribers a day. So what is that? Six thousand a month times three is eighteen. Oof. We're gonna step it up. Hmm. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do YouTube collaborations. We're gonna do. I think we can get it. It's aggressive, but we can get it. Yeah. What are you trying to end the year with? Six hundred. Yeah. Plus, even if we fall, I set it high. Let's aim for two fifty. Yeah. If we hit one fifty, that's impressive. <laughs> He should be in. Normally, he's in at least by 11. We just got back from Vegas yesterday, so yeah. So he's playing catch up. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, at the office. Somebody's over there. He said something about a friend. Some girl walked in. She said she talked to you a few days ago. She's a longtime friend. What's her name? I don't know. What's her name? Uh, she's that girl that I, I uh, that was following me on Twitter, Marco. Oh, bear. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. She said she's gonna come back around one. Okay, cool. Yeah, she's, she's, yeah, we used to valet together. Oh, cool.
Okay, yeah, I need to go pick up a bunch of stuff from... And then, as soon as I get that stuff, I'll be right over. Also, I'm going to set up... I got to set you up for IWJG, and then he's going to come in later. I'm going to set all, him up and his girlfriend with IWJG. What else do we need to get done today? Uh, maybe book flights to Miami a little earlier, so we're not paying that much. Yeah. We have a new social media calendar that I've designed. It's got something we're going to be doing every single day of the week. Our goal for quarter two is to get 250,000 subscribers. If we do every single one of these videos and promote the YouTube, it's a combination of Instagram, TikTok, live Instagram, live YouTube, YouTube videos, and Clubhouse. If we do all these all seven days of the week, we'll get 250,000 subscribers. Plus, it's a lot of collaborations with Roman and Eric every week. So sales goals, YouTube, social. Do you want to film the outro today or do it tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we can do the outro today. I need to get final numbers from Mike today. He's working on those right now. He'll be in 11. So I'll have final, I ha I'll have final numbers up to today, but we're still going to have like three days. Uh, These two watches sell. We're going to make five grand. Which two? I just bought two watches last night. I ripped them. Really? Yeah, that GMT with papers and then a date just paid 10 grand for the pair. Damn, okay. That GMT is going to bring 13 by itself. And then the date just will bring around four. Actually, f it could be like seven. If we do, if we, if we sell these white, right, we're gonna make six, seven grand on this pair. All right. Um, what else? Insurance on the R8. Um, I'm gonna call Haggerty right now. All right, let me know. All right. What so, kind yeah. of watch? What kind of watch are you looking Rolex, for? Rolex, obviously. Duh. Well, like, is there right. a specific Rolex or is it? Just... I mean, I know men's watches more than I know women's watches, obviously. Well, they yeah. Don't stock women's because men are going bigger, or I mean, women are going bigger. So. Obviously. Bigger is better. I'm just saying it's facts. <laughs> but here's the thing. Okay, so I don't get it personally. Like, you guys are a private company, obviously. Mm -hmm. Why not just walk into Rolex and buy it at Rolex? Good luck. I'll give you, I'll give you a story. <laughs> Good luck I'll with give that. You, I'll give you an example. Sorry. So, what do you do? Well, I'm an entertainer, stripper, whatever you want to call it. I'm in the... Oh. But also bartender. Okay. I've done any anything and everything. I entertain okay, so people. Stripper. stripper, whatever. Okay. Whatever. Same thing. Um, yes, I take my clothes off for money. <laughs> I relate this to watches. Well, I mean, all of our Every, clients. Hold no, on, hold here's, on. Here's I will relate it to you explain. right now. I'll give it to you in two seconds. Our clients have to basically strip for Rolex to get our watches at retail prices. And they strip their wallets. They strip their dignity. They strip <laughs> everything Okay, out. but here's my thing. You want to know what... I make six figures a year. You want to know what I look at? The first That's two things nice. I look at when a client walks in the door. The watch. Watch and, and shoes, a hundred percent. I would throw you off because I could wear a hundred thousand dollar watch and I wear Vans every day. So yeah, but that doesn't. The watch is no. The, the watch is more important. Yeah. Okay, because that's an investment. That's something that will gain value in but time. But let me ask it's you something. From your investment. perspective, I. Well, what if I was wearing hold on, give okay. and a G-Shock? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I want to see what the balance is. Listen. Personally, I, I go for a guy that has a nice watch. If okay, you have a Rolex, you if something. you have a Rolex on your wrist, I'm gonna talk to you. Okay. Okay. So no. Okay. You said you look at a guy with a Rolex mm -hmm. comes into your uh, facility and you're like, okay, but what deems in your eyes what's a nice Rolex? Does it have to be diamonds, really flashy? I mean, okay, so like. Can you recognize something? There's that, this place that's called Sissy's Log Cabin. Yes, where I know. I, I'm Arkansas. In Arkansas. Arkansas. That's that's where my ex bought his watch. Right. First off, the guy's. A idiot he hasn't insured it yet he may have now but he's had it for months hasn't mm -hmm. insured it. it's like a sixteen thousand dollar piece i mean sixteen thousand dollars like he makes way more than that it doesn't sure. matter but still insure the thing dumb do you know how to tell a fake rolex from a real rolex a hundred percent do you know really? yeah like isn't the if thing you can do it successfully <laughs> i will give you any rolex of your choice <laughs> well it has something to do with the face right see one of the things so what i'm saying is what? If, if that's what you guys are going off, guys are well, smart. Well, first off, they're gonna go after an like actual the best Rolex, fake Rolex. A Rolex doesn't run on a battery. No, we uh, nor did the fakes. Yeah. You gotta understand what level fake Rolexes are at right now. They're okay. so good. They're that high. They're so. I'm gonna show you. Okay. I've got two. I'm gonna. Well, show but you. I know that there's there's it's, something with the actual face. No. No, is it not? Not at all. Really? Uh, we've got fake Rolexes that have real parts in them. You don't know. Right. Then I probably wouldn't know. You wouldn't know, especially at night in a club in a dark setting. Oh, really? And I'm usually morning. drunk, so. What would be really funny is to train somebody like you in your industry to like absolutely know Rolexes and then just go in the strip clubs and like talk, talk 
fake I'm like, by the way, you got a fake one. No, but I'm like, by the way, your hairline isn't real either, you know? Oh, damn, like, yeah. I can tell those things. But they, like, literally women, take, like, DNA do... from your scalp and put it in other parts of your scalp that's to make it That's just a combat ball. No, but it's like, whatever. Who cares if you lost your hair? Yeah, I, that's... Here's my theory on men. If you have a big <laughs> and you're good looking, that's all you need. Wait, no, no, no. Yo, what is that that showed up? I don't know. Right? That's I'm like... about to find out. <laughs> Same. Give me that one. Did you buy another winder? Is that a Actually, grandfather me... clock out there, or what's that? It could be a grandfather <laughs> Rolex clock. That'd be awesome. You're not gonna know. I'm, I'm probably say. not gonna know. You're probably right. And if I do, I'm gonna like go and buy a bottle of tequila and get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to cite your sources on how you know it's fake. Don't just say one's fake and you win. It's not heads and tails. This would be so much easier if I didn't have like 90 mimosas earlier. <laughs> well, first off, I can. The times are different, anyways. Oh, I know that much. That's a the big times indicator. are different. <laughs> big indicator. Do not do this to me. You're like gonna embarrass me in front of the whole world, aren't you? Well, yeah, just two hundred thousand viewers a week. I really, honestly, am not like I'm not that b like can literally show my b for a living. I don't give a. B so far, every single thing on this watch looks exactly the same as the other one. <laughs> do you see what I'm trying to tell you? Half it's the like, guys that you thought had real the Rolexes most simple had this. Thing. Yeah. Here you go. If you need it. I have 20 20 unless I'm drunk. You said you were she drunk. You were drunk. Right. So, I'm not that drunk. Have you had this she said 90. No, I didn't. <laughs> I had like, okay, so I had a carafe of mimosas. So, every single thing about these watches looks exactly the same. Although, this finish is a little like, I don't know, you know? It's Which like, one you think like more sloppy looking. My intuition says this one, but it's not. It's not. Let me see. Pick. No, this is the real one. You said that was the real one? Yeah. yeah right. Am I right? Yeah. No, this <laughs> is fake. Hmm? This is the fake one, bro. God, you both are wrong. No, it's not, dude. I'm not that bad. The bezel, the coins are on the same. This is the real one, homie. No, it's not. You want no, that's that? the real one. That's what she said. This that's, is the real one. That's yeah, what that's I what said. said. That's the real this one. The oh, I'm sorry. And I know exactly. <laughs> I can tell a real from a fake. Yeah? Uh. What was the giveaway? She the said finish. The finish. So what is it that's different about them? One. I mean, the bezel doesn't even turn on this. Let me see. Is this the fake? Well, one? I didn't touch that's it like that. I know, but that's that's a way to tell. Like it for me, work for us then, because a lot of things we need more people. With. <laughs> I don't touch think it, we okay. could afford her. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there. Uh, Sixteen hundred No, I don't always make that kind of money. There's nights where I walk out of there with like fifteen bucks. It, it's just like it's Those a. Those nights we can afford you. It's a very volatile <laughs> industry. <laughs> it's so volatile. It really yeah. is. So. That's why I quit. Are you a stripper? When you get a... A Le Bear? <laughs> a Le Bear. Hell. Are you kidding me? I, I used to go to Le Bear all the time and I used to spend so much money. You're it's disgusting. You're in the industry. That's like comparing a bartender going to a bar and tipping and saying normal Okay, so tip. I'm pretty much a man trapped in a woman's body. That's going to upset a lot of the men you danced on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean like, I mean it more like, okay, so I think like a man. Like, I'm interested in the same things that men are. Million dollar rupee. Yeah. You, you could have, have one million dollars. <laughs> oh, I have a number. I forgot. I gave you my number. Yeah. I don't do business cards because nobody uses them. Guess what I do with business cards? Throw them in the why. trash. <laughs> I have so many. I don't look at them. I have way too many. I have like a shoebox full of business cards from all my clients and I'm like... And you, have you ever looked at them? No. So why would I give you a business card? <laughs> and then next time you need a watch or someone you know needs you're a like watch... You're like the uh, Gandalf think, oh, the Great of watches, watch guy, aren't you? You'll just think, I know a watch guy, but I can't remember his name. So if you save it in your phone right now, it's Anthony the watch guy. No, I, I would him. remember where you're at. It's like a location thing for but me. But if you're out of town, then you need to find my number. Say this. Anthony, the watch guy. The way through the year. Oh, I'm sorry. Fourth of the way through the year. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And uh, it feels like it's just flying by. So yeah. uh, we're going to jump right into the numbers and then we're going to go over a bunch of announcements, some things to expect. So first off, wrist check. What are you wearing? I am wearing a 5970J. It is the 2008 with the Lamania 2310 movement. These are a staple to any Patek collector and I just acquired it. Oh uh, yeah, is that staying in the personal collection? Uh, for now, I think oh, so. Some I mean, of the classics, huh? Not just the modern stuff? <laughs> well, I am wearing the new Vacheron Constantin Overseas Ultra Thin Perpetual Calendar Rose Gold Blue Dial. This is 
been a dream watch of mine since it came out. I've actually never seen it in person until we got the chance to go meet a good client of ours and get a lot of his watches on consignment. And I figured that... It looks like the uh, perpetual bug caught us. <laughs> right. Well, I figured like, you know, that's like the, that's the biggest deal, biggest single deal we've done to yeah. date. Why not reward ourselves with a piece from the collection? So, yeah. uh, jumping into the numbers, guys. Every week we have a sales goal of a number we want to hit to keep us on track to our goal towards 35 million. Since we're in season two now, that number's jumped up. It used to be 257,000 and some change. This week, starting uh, for season two, it's $538,461.55 that we have to hit every week, Monday through Friday. Uh, slow start to that. We are we came in at $220,710, uh, down about 53%, but we were traveling a lot. We had uh, Dylan's wedding. Also, still congratulations, Dylan. And um, Mike is traveling. And Mike is out of town so also. I hate you, Mike. Um, <laughs> worst time to take a vacation is when we get our biggest consignment deal. Plus, as you guys saw a minute ago in the video, we have taken on an investor and we've got a substantial investment to back us for some inventory. So you're gonna see stuff get a lot more interesting this season. Um, of that 220,000 in sales, 10 of those watches were retail. Our, we sold 10 watches, all went to retail customers, netting us a profit of about $17,650 for the week. So now that we've got the numbers out of the way, uh, also, I don't have the numbers to year to date right in front of me. In the next video, I will have that so you can see the countdown of where, or the tally of where we are at in, in line with our $35 million, uh, 35 million oh, yearly cool. goal. You know what tomorrow is, right? Rolex predictions. It is. So let's jump to it and let's throw our, we kind of sat down go here ahead, and we did these before. First. You want me to go first? Go ahead. Okay. So my predictions are... And some of you guys that have been watching us and following us, we've been banking on two big pieces to get discontinued. The yellow gold green Daytona and the platinum Daytona. So we've been holding those, stockpiling them uh, in anticipation of that. So those are my first two. Now with the platinum, I don't actually think they're gonna discontinue it. I think they're going to discontinue the current reference number and reintroduce it somehow. I think you had a prediction on that. We'll get to it in a second. But the current 116506, I think it's gone. The 116508 green dial, I think it's gone. I also think they're going to discontinue the rainbow, but not for good. It's too popular. They're going to also do away with the current model and introduce something new, maybe something that they've never done with a rainbow. Another prediction is I think we've got a purple bezel GMT coming. I think we have something Rolex has never done, which is a perpetual calendar. You've seen AP, Paddock, Vacheron, you've seen a lot of these brands come out with perpetual calendars. Rolex, it's your turn. I think we've got one coming tomorrow. I think the Milgauss, it's been in production, what, 10 years? A long time, 10, 10, 11 years? No, it's, it's time to go, it's maybe like longer than that. Years. Okay, yeah, it's about time Four to seven. go. I, I put away a blue dial for myself. I think that one's gone. The green dial is a great one also. If this happens, uh, you saw the white one go, what, last year or two years ago? Uh, yeah. It's, it's gone. 17, 16. I think that one's gone. Um, I'm sure there's going to be dinky little uh, adjustments to the date just. I don't think the sub's going to get anything. Um, I don't see a color. I know purple. I, I have a strong feeling purple is somewhere. My, my best guess is the GMT. We could see something done to a sub. I, 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 that's a, like, you know what, unlikely. Hopefully, and I would love to see this, a yellow gold green dial sub. We've yeah, been wanting to see that oh, for a few yeah. years. Oh, yeah. Was, they did a mock-up of yeah, that, the gold that Hulk. looks yeah. so good. They do that, sign me up. I'll buy yes. two of those. <laughs> okay, so I got, um, guys, I think what we're going to see is an Explore 2 ceramic bezel. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's been predicted for quite some time, and I think that is uh, on the chopping block for them, because I mean, there's some hints online that showcase uh, that happening on their website. What are the other? Uh, I think the Explorer 1, 214270 two, uh, two, is gonna get updated with a new movement um, that's due for that. Maybe they'll go to a 224270 reference. And here's my Daytona predictions. The Oyster Flex is gonna see a platinum lineup. I think we're gonna see a the same watch we have now, but with the Oyster Flex bezel. Ooh. 
That would be. I'm sorry, excuse me, the Oyster Flex strap. I mean, that would be absolutely <laughs> amazing. No, and on one more watch I would love to see is the Oyster Flex Blue Dial Daytona in white oh. gold. That would just be absolutely yeah. incredible. I've always, always dreamed of Rolex doing that because that is just such an amazing uh, modern piece that would look amazing on the rubber strap. Rolex does everything pretty subtle, so I can't get too wild. <laughs> right. I do think we're going to see, I, I, they're going to do something along with the rainbow. You're going to see, they're going to shock us with something. I think, you know, kind of a couple, like they did a couple years ago when they introduced that tiger Daytona, the eye of the tiger yeah, Daytona yeah. and that leopard one. It's something, something it's crazy. Hard, it's is hard coming. predicting their precious metal stone, yeah. you know, their collaborate. That's going to be hard to predict because they always throw wild cards there. I mean, right. who would have saw the tiger eye coming? I know, right? Who knows? Uh, next up on the list, guys, we just did our biggest consignment deal with a, a longtime client of ours. Uh, we are going to move our business. We're focusing more on, instead of being an inventory heavy business, we want to focus more on consignment. We want to create uh, an all-in-one retail shop for consignment pieces. There's a lot of websites online that allow you to send your watch in and they give you an offer and it, it, there's no timeline or, or rhyme or reason to how it's how long it'll take or what you'll actually make. It's kind of up to them, but you never really get to see that, see that inventory in person. Well, that's what we want to focus on is having a spot you can actually come to, have a wide selection because right. um, as we've said before in a lot of videos, we don't stock a lot of stuff like Tag, Panerai, Hublot, Omega, a lot of the stuff you guys want to see simply because it doesn't make sense for us uh, money-wise opening our doors up to a more consignment based business will allow us to, as you actually have just seen in a lot of the inventory, we have tons of new stuff. That's pretty exciting. We have these, all these crazy Panerai's I've never seen, but they seem to be very desirable and getting a lot of, you know, people asking about what we just got in a lot of cool IWCs that I haven't really mm -hmm. educated myself with. We've got a lot of cool Vacherons that have come in, obviously mm -hmm. yeah. Anthony snagged one minus one. Yeah. <laughs> we have seen, um, <laughs> A bunch of Hublots, I believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, dude, I've, I've yes. never had, I don't think we've ever had four Hublots in stock. Yeah, yeah we're usually U kicking Ublos them in their for those that are <laughs> Hublots for those that are going to uh, rip me for what how I pronounce stuff. The idea is we want to open our doors up to more variety. And the only way we're going to do that is by opening the floodgates to consignment. Guys, we are also going to do set rate consignment fees. Uh, we are going to beat any consignment price anywhere online. So if you jump over to our website as of the time of this video, you'll see an updated page solely on consignment, exactly how it works from start to finish, from how you get your watch to us and get a quote, or get a quote before you ship your watch in, all the way down to the payment process. So the shipping, everything, it'll all cover that in detail. And also we are working on a new website that's gonna be heavily approved on. Yes. And we're gonna have some new processes on contacting us that's gonna help you guys tremendously and take the load off us so we can focus more on our sales guys getting those leads than pushing us when we need something. Right. Next up, uh, I have to say, you see these two beauties in front of us. Um, shout out to the watch stand, guys. I'm sure you guys have seen them advertised all over Instagram, all over Facebook. I've seen them a ton of times. We were just over with Roman Sharf's office. He had both of these pieces. Uh, and then they, they sent us the same ones. And like Roman, we don't shout stuff out that we don't actually like and it's funny i've been saying i was going to buy one of these uh specifically i wanted the white marble one but black this matches the desk perfectly yeah another cool thing guys about this thing is these are extremely sturdy stands i can sit there and hit this yeah. and it's not going to tip over the quality of these things you can you can hear them when you open this up all these pieces come out i mean this is seriously just amazing quality it feels good it feel it doesn't feel cheap which is what a lot of them you see do yeah. and i've had a ton of different it's, carrying it's cases it's almost as satisfying as like a seat belt in your car it just clicks right <laughs> in. <laughs> and you know your watches are going to be safe because they're not going to bump into each other yeah that was one i liked i got that rolex one that someone gave me as a yeah. gift Actually, Rolex gave it to me and it didn't right. have a divider, so your I'll never use it because your watch is just kind of ding around. I, I use it every day because I don't care. All my watches are vintage, so they can get scratched up. No, that's true. Shout out watch stand. Guys, if you are looking for some cool stuff, this these guys nailed it. So these, these guys are going to do big things in this business. One of the biggest moves we're looking to make this season is converting all to 4K video. You guys have been asking about it. It's It's been a learning process. You know, if you think back four months ago we were just bringing darby on to start shooting video 
and trying to follow around. Darby's got a full-time job. He is uh, with us. He's shooting five days a week. He's editing, like spending two full days editing, then another staying up all night. So it's been kind of a stepping stone learning this, getting used to how much time it's going to take to shoot, how many days we're going to have to get uh, worth of footage, and then how much time he needs to sit and spend editing. And then we started adding the, I think one of the biggest things he said was adding uh, subtitles in the videos. It takes a whole day just to do subtitles. So we, uh, we brought on a second videographer. We're actually uh, going to be looking for another one, someone a little more experienced that can kind of take over Darby's position. Once we get that in, then it comes down to actual hardware. Right. We've been pricing out the mm-hmm. processor, the hard drives, the camera equipment, and you know, We're looking and, around roughly about 50 grand worth of extra equipment yeah. that we need yeah. to really get the quality up for you guys so you guys can have a better viewing experience and it more feels like a TV show than a uh, handy cam work but which obviously we're beyond that but you know, yeah. it's going to be really nice once this is all set up oh yeah it, it's just a pricey investment <laughs> that we want to step our way into we don't want to just go out and buy all this equipment and just jump the gun we want to inch our way into it so bear with us that is our goal by the end of this season to have everything 100 percent 4k for you guys and there's a possibility that we could even be cutting it up into two videos a month two videos a week i'm sorry uh, the next up, at the beginning of this video, you saw me writing out the social media calendar just so we can have it on there. And I'll put this down below in the comments, guys. But we want to have something for you every day, whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram stories, Instagram lives, Clubhouse, collaborations. We want you to have something to watch for us every day of the week. Now, we don't expect you to watch it every single day and consume your life with it, but we've, we realize that there are going to be days that are better for you to sit back and watch something and there's going to be days that just aren't practical so we want to we want to have something for every day of the week uh, i'll rattle them off real quick monday we're going to do instagram stories and TikTok videos on tuesday obviously our day in the life video that you're watching now is going to be every tuesday at 10 a.m uh, wednesday we're going to do clubhouse deals where at noon central standard time we're going to get live on clubhouse and we're going to talk about watch deals that you guys have, trade deals, uh, general market news, stuff like that. On Thursday, we're gonna go live on Instagram and YouTube, mainly the Instagram pages, and we're gonna do our our inventory sales like we did last week. That worked out really well. After it was all said and done, we still sold about 13 watches. Pretty great for a day's work, or for a few hours worth of work. Uh, Friday, we're gonna do Instagram live Q&A. We're gonna film that, we're gonna make it into a podcast, uh, we're going to, let's see, Instagram Live q and I think that's what it is. Yeah, Thursday, what I'll do is I'll post a story on my personal and the Timepiece Gentleman Instagram asking, inviting your questions in. And then on Friday, we'll hop on live on both of those channels, and I'll answer as many questions as I can. Marco and I will be here. Saturday, we're going to do the same thing on YouTube. Friday night, I will, or Friday, I will put a question on the community page of YouTube, inviting questions in there. We're going to film it. We're going to go live on YouTube and let you guys ask any questions you can. We're going to answer them on the spot for you. And then on Sunday, we have a special collaboration we're going to start doing with Watch Eric and Roman Scharf. Every Sunday, as they post their videos throughout the week and as we post ours, we're going to hop on a clubhouse chat. Let you guys uh, chime in and talk about things you liked in the video, things you didn't like, stuff you'd like to see, stuff you didn't like seeing, whatever. Just shoot the shit with Roman and Eric and Marco and I. So that's going to be on Sunday. So a little bit of something for everyone all week long. Next one, YouTube. YouTube is our bread and butter, and we have grown immensely, and we couldn't be more thankful. It's all for you, all because of you guys. Let's keep growing. We did 50,000 followers in five months. I think we're starting to pick up some momentum and some traction. We're starting to figure this thing out. We've got some good content coming. Let's see if we can get 250,000 subscribers by the end of season two, which would be, be what, June, July? Yeah, give or take. End of, end of June? Yeah, so yeah. end of June is quarter two. June so 15th? 200, no, June 30th. 30 days in June. So end of June, 250,000 subscribers is the goal. So guys, when you like these videos and you share them, you comment, that helps us get more exposure. It bumps us in the algorithm. So we appreciate everything you guys do for us to help us. Last couple things, you know, we've been talking about doing fan meetups. We're traveling a lot more. We have a link on our website under the networking 
events and I'll drop a link below for the network landing page. Go on there, drop your name, your the city you live in and your email. It's gonna add it to a spreadsheet so we can track where everyone's at. We're gonna start flying out to Chicago, LA, Nashville, Miami, San Francisco. When we're in these cities, guys, we're gonna reach out to you and let you know we're gonna plan a dinner each, of, each time we take a trip, we're gonna have a dinner or a lunch plan. That way we can meet you guys and interact with our fans because you guys are what keep the channel going. I'll also have links to all of our personal Instagram pages as well as the Timepiece Gentleman Instagram and the store. So make sure you like and follow us there. It's a different, each of us have our own vibe and our own style yeah. of posting. Marco does a lot of vintage stuff. The Timepiece Gentleman, we're gonna start doing a lot more behind the scenes. So you guys have actually been asking for more videos throughout the week. Tune in to the Timepiece Gentleman Instagram or at Timepiece Gentleman. I'm gonna start posting story behind the scenes every day. So all throughout the week, you can kind of get a glimpse of what to expect on next week's video. That'll get the fix for some of you guys that are wanting more than one video a week until we get to that point. So guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified every time we drop a video.